So, all right. So today we are looking at the basic building blocks of critical thinking, and this is um, not just for critical thinking. This applies to a lot of your other classes too. Um, every class that you're taking, somebody's making claims, right? You're making claims too. If you're writing a paper, you are making claims and you're going to be expected to back them up in some way. You may or may not do that. Uh, anytime that you've had a paper returned to you with red ink and the instructor said, what's your evidence for this or, you know, why are you saying this? What they were asking you to do was to back up the claim that you were making. Um, and claims are connected to issues. Um, when people get into arguments in the bad sense of the term, you know, when we're arguing with each other, we're angry, we're fighting, quite often it's not just that we're making claims, we're usually confusing issues. So a lot of domestic arguments begin with whether somebody should take the trash out. That's an issue. Um, whether somebody is a lazy bum, that's a different issue than whether somebody should take the trash out. Whether uh, a person never does anything around the house and doesn't respect your space or anything like that, that's yet a, a third separate issue, right? And when people mix these issues together, this is when things start getting heated. Um, also when you're writing papers, if you're, if you're blurring issues together, your thinking is getting confused. Some people are going to try to blur issues together uh, deliberately in order to manipulate you, in order to appeal to uh, your views on one issue and sort of transfer them to another. So one of the basic skills that you want to develop in the critical thinking class that you're going to apply in your other classes is being able to tell when a claim is made and then what issue that claim is, is connected to being able to distinguish different issues from each other. Arguments, um, here we start getting to the bigger picture. When we want to try to convince each other of things that we don't agree on, when there's a live issue, you're on one side of the, the, the table, I'm on the other side. We don't believe the same thing about some basic issue. Um, you have a lot of different op uh, uh, alternatives. You can fight with somebody physically, right? You can threaten them. You can appeal to their, their financial interests. You can bribe them. You can appeal to their emotions, right? These are all things that you can do. Some, um, some people try to get other people to pity them or to fear them or to enjoy being with them and then therefore accept the claims that they make. That only takes you so far. If you get somebody to accept your claim because you're providing them with money, what's going to happen once you quit providing them with money? They'll reject, it. They'll reject the claim. Right. So think about what happens in the workplace. Right? I'm assuming that all of you have held a job at one time or another. Um, quite often bosses are not the most interesting people. Um, you may not find what they're interested in and want to talk about uh, interesting at all. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and leave it there. Um, but sometimes you have to pretend like you're interested, right? You're actually assenting to a claim. What's your last name? Clark. Okay. I'm going to need you to sign that. What's your last name? Go ahead and see, make sure to sign that after. Um, you're actually looking at a claim. You know, such and such a thing is interesting. And you're accepting that claim so long as what? So long as they're giving you something. Yeah, what's the incentive if they're your boss? Very basic, right? Money. Uh, you want to you stay employed. Um, if I threaten you, that may get you to accept a claim for the time being, but that won't work for long, will it? Um, especially since I don't really have anything to threaten you with other than, you know, oh, I'll give you a bad grade, but, you know. Um, 
If I do, there's recourse. Right? You can go to my, my chair and appeal it and all that. So what do we do? We use arguments. And when we make arguments, what we're doing is we're providing more claims. Instead of uh, providing uh, claims that, let me check. It's still in? Good. Um, instead of um, providing claims that the other person won't accept, you start looking for claims that they will accept. So, if you don't think that you should do the practice homework, right? I might say something like, well, you do want to do well in this class, right? You accept that, and they say, yeah, yeah, I accept that. Well, doing the practice homework will help you to do well in the class. Yeah, I accept that. Well, then why don't you do the practice homework? You should do the practice homework. Then you might accept that claim. What I've done there is I've made an argument. Notice all I've done is give you other claims. So that's the big picture. Um, what I want to do now is um, talk about what your book goes over with, with uh, each of these basic concepts. So let's start with claim, right? What is a claim? What does your book tell you about claims? Right? It can be true or false. That's that's telling you something about the claim. That's not telling you. It's a right. It's a statement. Well, what does that statement do? It asserts something that may be true or false. Okay. The way the book. It's a, true or false works. Um, it asserts something to be the case or not to be the case. And you brought up truth and falsity. If it says that something is the case when it's really not, then it's false, right? If it says that something is the case when it is the case, then it's true. <laughs> Notice they can be negative. Um, I am not wearing my hat right now. That's a claim. That's a true claim until I put my hat back on. Right? Um, so the claim is the most basic element of, of arguments. And I'm going to use some examples that are different from those in the book that are similar to those. If we say that Charlotte is the most populous city in North Carolina, that's a claim, right? It's saying that something, Charlotte, is the, the largest, as far as population, city in North Carolina, which I think is true, isn't it? Yes. I think, I think some of the, the conglomerations might be bigger, where you have Winston, Salem, and Greensboro together, but Charlotte by itself is the, the biggest. Um, there are less than 30 students in this classroom. That's a claim, right? Saying something is the case. Uh, there's intelligent life on other planets. Your book uses that as an example. That's a claim. Is it something that we know about right now? No. But it's still a claim, right? It's still saying something is the case. Um, too much high fructose corn syrup in your diet is not good for you. That's a claim. Now, you, you know, unless you know what high fructose corn syrup is, you, that claim may not be intelligible to you, meaning you may not be able to understand that claim right now. But you could, you know, what would you do? You'd go back and look at the components of the statement. Um, if you don't like the laws, you should try to change them. Is that a claim? It's not an argument, because an argument has to be several claims put together. Right? Is that, is that several claims? No. no. Is it a claim? No. Yeah. When we say things about moral matters, we're making claims. When we say things about we, what we like or don't like or think is right or wrong, we're saying something is or isn't the case. So you should brush your teeth every day, a prudential value judgment. That's a claim. Um, you should not brush your teeth every day. That's also a claim. That's the counterclaim to it. Um, 
Here's a very broad one. Is it, human, it is human nature to desire freedom. That's a claim too, isn't it? It's talking about some universal things, but it's still a claim. It's saying something is the case. Um, so if that's what claims are like, what are things that are not claims? Your book doesn't talk that much about this, but use your, use your mind with this. What are some other kinds of language? A statement is language, isn't it? What are other ways you use language that are not claims? Very good. So, um, did the back, did the Packers beat the Bears yesterday? At the time that I wrote that, um, that was a uh, <coughs> that was still a, a contested issue. Now it's not. My team's going to the Super Bowl. Um, that's not a claim, though. That's just a question. A question doesn't assert something to be the case. A question asks whether something is the case, doesn't it? Uh, what's not a claim? That by itself is a question that's not a claim. It may be about claims, but that doesn't make it a claim. Um, rhetorical questions. What are rhetorical questions? Ones that don't need to be answered. That don't need to be answered, and why not? Because the answer is in the question, so... Yeah, the, the answer is in the question, or, or maybe you could say you assume that the person knows the answer. So sometimes we do this when we want to put somebody down. Are you really that big of a fool? That's not an honest question, is it? If somebody asks that, they're actually you know, doing something else. That's not a claim. We're going to see how that can be connected to a claim in a moment. Um, are you a smart shopper? Anybody that they ask that of, you know, they're, they're trying to portray that they already think they're a smart shop. Right? Uh, what else? So we have questions. What else are not claims? Is it opinion? Opinions are claims. Because if you have an opinion about something, you're, you're saying that something is or isn't the case. So if you think this is a, a good tie or a bad tie, that's, that's your opinion. And you, you could make claims about that. Um, if you wanted to be obstinate, you could say, no, the Bears beat the Packers yesterday. Right? Um, and nobody would agree with you, but um, you could make that, and that could be your opinion. Right? What else? What are other ways we use language where we're not making a claim? You do it every day, guaranteed. Well, not statements, because statements are going to, you know, be claims. What do you do when, when, when you get hurt? Do you make any sounds? Ouch. Yeah, those are what we call exclamations. There are certain sounds that we make, and those are part of our language. We understand um, what they mean. They're not the same in every language, as a matter of fact. Um, if you're in South America, people don't say, ouch. Does anybody know what they'd say instead? Dios well, Dios mío would be an, excla ex an exclamation as well, but that could be for surprise, too. Um, I, right? So these are not the same in every single culture, but you can understand them. And actually, if, you know, if you're watching a movie and you see somebody drop a weight on their foot, then they say, ay, 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 you know, you can figure out that they're in pain, right? Um, but they're not actually making a claim. What else? So we have questions, exclamations. If I tell you, um, please open your books to page six. Am I, am I telling you something is or isn't the case? Command. Yeah, it's a command. Very good. Um, and now notice, too, the fact that I say please, it's still a command, isn't it? Uh, you might say a request fit in there, too. But... Um, yeah, so commands. Um, now, commands can be very forceful. If I say, everybody get up now, right? That's, that's equally a command as to please open your books to page six. Um, anything else that you can think of? Think about what goes into it, to something being a statement. Think about your basic 
elementary school grammar. What, is, what does every sentence have to have? Two components. A noun and a verb. So if you just put a phrase, now you don't actually have a statement. So for example, um, abortion. That by itself is not a claim. That's a topic. That's not even, by the way, an issue. That's only a topic. It's only a phrase. Or the best hamburger and fries combo in town. That's interesting, right? But it's not yet a claim because it, nobody's asserting something to be the case. Um, now, can all of these be turned into claims? Yeah, you can turn a question into a claim, especially a rhetorical question. Are you really that dumb? You really are that dumb. That's what they're saying. They're saying that to you. Are you a smart shopper? You are a smart shopper. That they're asserting that to be the case. Exclamations, how could you replace those with claims? Like Dios mío, right? Um, or, you know, people say, uh, my God. What are, they, what are they expressing, usually? One of, one of the uh, critical thinking texts that we used to use before, used as an example for this, great balls of fire, as if people have ever, ever say that anymore. Um, if somebody says something like that, what are they expressing? What, what kind of emotion? Excitement. Could be excitement, yeah. Surprise. And it could be like, oh my gosh, like something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all of those you could replace with a claim, couldn't you? You could say, so-and-so is surprised. So-and-so is shocked. So-and-so is excited. Um, commands. We can replace those by saying, you should, or you ought to, or I think you ought to, or, or something along those lines. And a phrase, we can complete a phrase. Um, there's one other type of language I'm not going to put on here, what we, what we sometimes call ceremonial language. Uh, for instance, I now pronounce you husband and wife. That's not actually a statement. It's not saying something, it's not asserting something to be the case, it's making something to be. It's what we call performative language. But that's pretty close to claims, too, isn't it? Um, what other? Oh, I promise. I promise to grade you fairly this semester. That is performative language as well. Um, notice, performative language is always about the future, too, isn't it? Um, okay, so everybody clear about basic idea of claims? Anybody got any confusions or questions or? Okay, so now we go on to um, a little bit more complex things about this. What can claims be about? So people brought up the notion of claims have to be true or false. That's absolutely correct. Um, what can claims be about? They can be about a lot of different things. And this is where students often get confused. So I want you to think about each of these that I'm, I'm going to, to say, and think about whether they're a claim or not. So if we look at a, you know, the abortion topic, anybody who needs an abortion should have access to the procedure. Claim or not claim? It's a claim, right. Now notice it's using the word should. So we're, we're talking about values here. Later on in the chapter, we're going to talk about value judgments. That is a moral value judgment. Uh, abortion is morally wrong, and anybody who gets one is doing a terrible thing. Claim or not claim? Claim. Now notice you could also call this an opinion or a judgment or something like that, but it is a claim. And this one's a little bit complex. It's got that word and in it, doesn't it? So it's asserting two different things. But the fact that it's asserting two different things doesn't mean that it's not asserting each of them in its turn. Aliens perform abortions on other planets. Claim or not claim? Claim. Now you seem a little dubious. Not quite sure, right? Again, apply this criteria. Is it saying something to be the case? Yes. Do we know it's the case? No, but is that relevant to whether it's a claim? No. It's a claim, whether we know it to be the case or not. 
after we determine whether it's a claim, then we can go on to the next step and say, well, how do you know that? Right? How do you know there's aliens at all? Um, here's a, the last one. Wonder Woman would never get an abortion. Claim or not claim? Why? Wonder Woman isn't real. Yes, very good. It's still asserting something to be the case. Um, one of the ones that I've used in previous classes, which invariably got a lot of discussion going, uh, people believe it or not would take sides on this. If Spider-Man and Batman got into a fight, Batman would win. And I would do this to different classes. You know, I teach critical thinking over and over again. And so I would do the 8 o'clock class, and, and most of the class would be pro-Spider-Man, anti-Batman. And then the next class would be pro-Batman, anti-Spider-Man. And they'd come up with all sorts of reasons why, well, Spider-Man has super strength. Yeah, but Batman has his utility belt full of technology, and he's been training all this time. Yeah, but Spider-Man can, you know, shoot him full of, you know, the web stuff. Um, and they go back and forth. People get very excited about totally imaginary claims, don't they? Um, and if you really want to hear that sort of thing, go to a comic book convention and then throw out something like, you know, Batman would beat up Spider-Man. Um, completely imaginary things, but they are claims. That's why people can get worked up over them, because they can assert them. Oh, Batman would win. Um, so claims can be about all sorts of things. They can be about things that are true or false. They can be about things that you can perceive or not. For instance, the cup is on the table. Is everybody able to see? Everybody has a sort of clear line of vision to this, this cup. Um, freedom is a good thing. Show me your freedom. Can you see it? Can you smell it? Can you hear it? No, but it's still, we're still making a claim if we say freedom is a good thing. Um, things whose truth or falsity will change over time. The cup is on the table, it's true right now, now it's false, isn't it? Okay. So some claims may uh, be true or false depending on, on the, the time, the date, the location. Um, things that we can resolve or not. Aliens exist. Um, you know, if, if we, practically speaking, we have no way of resolving them. Short of, you know, aliens appearing to us or, you know, um, it turning out that Area 51 really is a government alien, whatever, testing facility. Um, short of a revelation like that, there's no way we can figure it out, can we? But it, it's still a claim. It's either true or false. Either aliens do exist or they, they don't. Um, what else? Real or imaginary? Uh, or remembered. The cup that I had last week um, held more coffee than this one. Anyone remember whether that was, was the case or not? I don't even remember. I don't remember what cup I had last week. I don't think it was this one. But I can still make a claim, can't I? Right? So you notice we're expanding our range of what, what we consider to be claims. Um, things that people agree on. When we say that something's controversial, what do we mean? What does that term mean? This is a controversial issue. What are we saying? Right. People are not in agreement with each other on it. So the tuition increase was a necessary measure in this time of budget cutting. Um, that's controversial, isn't it? Do you guys like having your tuition raised? I don't think so. So you may have, you know, motives for, for rejecting that claim. Um, maybe you don't think it was necessary. Maybe, you know, we should have found the money somewhere else. 
Um, I don't actually have an, a, a strongly held opinion on that one myself. It's but like it's a claim. It's still like ten times cheaper than Illinois. Yeah. Well, it's cheaper than, than quite a few states. Um, California, by the way, they used to be really cheap. Really jacking it up because it's unsustainable. Um, okay, so everybody's clear about what the claims are. Let's go on to issues now. When you have a controversial claim, this is the best way to think about issues. An issue is going to be connected to a claim and to another claim that's, that's what we call the counterclaim, or it's corresponding claim. So, <clears throat> an issue is going to be a question, or it's going to use the term whether. Abortion is not an issue. Abortion by itself is a topic. You don't yet have an issue. Is abortion legal? That's an issue. Is abortion morally justified or not? That's an issue. Because there can be claims on either side. And if the issue is phrased in one way, the claims have to be phrased in the same way. Um, the handout that I, I produced for you that's available in Blackboard goes over uh, a lot of this and it gives you a few examples. Let's take the tuition increase um, thing. And we'll make it very simple. Whether tuition increase was necessary. What are the two sides to this? Right. Very good. Tuition, I'm going to use a little bit of abbreviation, increase was necessary. And the one I suspect most students hold, tuition increase, not, here's the key word, was not necessary. Right? That key word is not. That's what we use to negate things. Let's say we, we frame it a little bit differently. Let's say the issue is um, whether we should raise tuition. One claim should could be uh, yes, we should in fact raise tuition. The opposite claim, this is where you have to be a little bit careful, would the opposite claim be, we need to lower tuition? No, because is that the opposite of, of raising tuition? In one sense it is, but when we're talking about claims and issues here, you want to use that word not. Um, we should not raise the tuition. That's different than saying we should lower it. Or um, what's the di what's the opposite uh, as far as this goes of always? Is it never? Sometimes, Sometimes right? Because that's all you need in order to negate it. Um, students always show up to class. Is the opposite of that? Students never show up to class. Not as far as issues and claims are concerned. Sometimes students don't show up to class. That would be the, the opposite of it. And the issue would be whether students always show up to class. Now notice, the issue has to have the same language as the claims. Otherwise, it's not the, the issue that corresponds to those claims. Um, now, I want to make sure you, that you don't confuse issues with, with topics. Um, so, you know, is abortion legal or not in this state? That's an issue, isn't it? The answer is yes. So one of the claims is true and the other claim is false. You can think of it as you've got the yes side and the no side, or if you like Latin, you know, pro and contra. Um, you know, when you make a pro and con list, you're using Latin terms, actually. Um, abortion, is that an issue? It's a topic, right. Because if you just say abortion, what sort of claim would correspond to that? Abortion, yes, no. Eh, there's no. There's no claims, there's no issue there. Uh, abortion in the law, again, 
just a topic, right? Uh, abortion in this state. Still not a claim yet. How about is abortion legal? It's not a claim. Remember, claims are, claims are not questions. Issues can be questions, and issues then can be answered on either side. Is abortion legal? Um, now notice, if we ask, is abortion legal, is that the same issue as, is abortion legal in this state? Yeah. No. One's more, what we say, one's more general than the other one. We could be more specific. Is late-term abortion legal in this state? I believe the answer is no, because it's, it's illegal in most states. Um, there's a big, big uh, uh, story about um, late-term abortion bill that came out recently that's been catching a lot of attention. Not in this state, though. Um, but notice, that's more specific. Should so-and-so get an abortion? That's a whole different claim. Or that's a whole different issue. Sorry. Notice I was even confusing them. That's a whole different issue than whether abortion should be legal or whether abortion is morally permissible. It's connected in that they have to do with abortion, but it's not the same issue or, at all. <coughs> and quite often when somebody comes to another person and they're, they're struggling with an issue, should I get an abortion? Um, the other person might not actually engage with the same issue. Well, abortion is legal. So should I get an abortion? Is that a claim? Or an issue? That's an issue, right? Because it's a it's question. It can be answered, yes, I should. I no, I shouldn't. Um, what, what I'm trying to get at is that Often when people will ask these sort of issues, the person will give them an answer. And the answer will be a claim, but it's a, it's a claim corresponding to a different issue. Um, should I major in business? Um, so, yes, I should major in business. No, I shouldn't major in business. Um, do you like the business professors? Yes, I do like the business professors. No, I don't like the business professors. That's a different issue. It, it could be connected, right? But it's not the same issue. Answering one question is not the same thing as answering the other question. Um, so, everybody clear about issues? This is something that I'm going to point out uh, over and over again, because people are going to mix up claims and issues. But it's very important to get this down. You want to practice with this quite a bit. Uh, in part because the next thing we go to is um, arguments. So let me get rid of a little bit of this apparatus here. We have issue. We have a claim. Let's say it's a controversial issue. Half the class believes one way. Half the class believes the other way. What are we going to do? Throw desks at each other? Shout? Well, that, those are possibilities. People do do that sort of thing. Uh, but let's say we wanted to be a bit more civilized. What do we do? I believe this. You believe this. What do you have to do? Right. And an argument... Looks like this. What can you give me? All you can give me are more claims. Hopefully they're going to be claims that I'll accept. And hopefully those claims will lead me to see that your claim is actually correct. Now it might be a more complicated picture than that, right? What if I don't accept all of those claims? Then you have to offer me something for those. And this is what we call, um, there are some technical terms. We call these the premises of the argument. And we call this the... Conclusion. What is the conclusion? The conclusion is the claim that you want to get the other person to accept that they're, they're not already accepting. But it might actually be you, too. You could make an argument to yourself. And that so, could be on either side of the conclusion, right? Uh, yeah, as, as a matter of fact, quite often this will be what happens. You have an argument on one side, and you have an argument. On the other side, and they both have the same basic structure. 
premises leading to conclusions. The premises are what support or give evidence or give reasons or um, you know, attempt to convince the other person of the truth of the conclusion. Um, sometimes you may find it impossible to find premises that the other person will accept. Uh, especially if there are emotions involved or interests involved. It doesn't mean that you don't try to make an argument. Um, another point, too, about arguments. If you are holding claims, which, which you all do, because we all have opinions, right? The term opinion signifies a, a kind of claim. Um, do you actually have any evidence or good reasons to believe the things that you do believe? The things that you hold as opinions? Some of them, yes. Some of them you could, on the spot, if I asked you, why do you believe this claim, you would be able to give me reasons supporting it. For instance, if I ask you, um, why do you think they shouldn't raise your tuition next year? We're, we're having budget cuts after all. Why shouldn't they raise your tuition? Can you give me any, any reasons? I'm sure you can. If they don't raise it, then that will put a bigger deficit on mm. budget cuts. We're looking for reasons to not raise it. That, that would be reasons for raising it. Because the economy people can't afford it. Okay. So now, what do we have? There's a claim. You guys shouldn't have your tuition raised. Why not? Uh, you can't afford it due to the, the state of the economy. You've made an argument. You could go to the chancellor and, you know, put a petition together and make that same argument. You could say, look, you know, we've had enough. I mean, you might add some other language in it. We're not going to take this sort of thing from you. Um, but ultimately what it would come down to is making some sort of claims, and those claims are going to be connected. He doesn't accept something like, you shouldn't have your tuition raised, but he might accept things like, you know, this is really putting a hardship on us students. Um, we're not making, you know, the sort of money that, that administrators are making. It's very hard for you to relate to our condition. But that's your whole job, isn't it? as the person in charge of this university. To look out for the students. You might, you know, you might put a whole bunch of claims in there, all of them ultimately trying to support that one point, that conclusion, that you want the other person to accept. If you're doing that, you're making an argument. So you've been making arguments your entire life. Um, you did it when you were a kid and you wanted some candy. Okay? But probably a bad argument at first. I should get that candy. And your, and your mom or your dad said, uh, no, you shouldn't get the candy. Actually, they probably said, you're not getting the candy. But then, you know, you asked, why not? Well, you know, you don't need it. You don't have to have it. I'm not getting it for you. you know. And then you made some, you pr provided some other claims. I really want it. You're making an argument there, a bad argument. Right? For the kid, I really want it is a good reason why they should have it, isn't it? Part of growing out of childhood is learning that, learning the fact that um, just because you think something is good doesn't mean that other people do. Just because you want it uh, doesn't mean that you should have it. Right? It's learning to get rid of old arguments. Um, I was hoping that we would have some time to go over a few of the um, uh, practice problems that your book provides. I think we may only get to one or two of them. Let's look at exercise um, 1.4, 1, 1, which is on page 25. What this is asking you to do is to figure out, do these actually contain arguments? How are you going to tell whether they actually contain arguments? Look to see whether they have the structure. Look to see whether there's some basic point that they're trying to get somebody else to accept and whether they're providing reasons why the, the reader should accept that claim. So let's look at number two. Carl would like to help out, but he won't be in town. We'll have to find someone else who has a truck. Is there an argument there or not? What do the rest of you think? Carl would like to help out, but he won't be in town. We'll have to find someone else who owns a truck. Yeah. 
There is an argument there. There, there are claims that are connected together. Some of, the, some of the claims are providing support for why you should believe the other claim. So now, whenever you have an argument, first thing to do, after you figured out whether there is an argument, what is the conclusion? What is the most basic claim that the other things are providing support for? What is it in this case? Is, is, so Carl would like to help out, but he won't be in town. That's the claim, and then we'll have to find someone else who owns a truck is providing support for that. Mm -hmm. oh, we'll have to find someone yeah. else, and then the claim is because we'll be out of Yeah, the, the, the conclusion, the claim that, that is being led to, right, is we'll have to find someone else who owns a truck. That's the conclusion they're drawing. What are they drawing that from? What's the evidence? Carl won't, would like to help out, but he won't be in town. So we do have an argument. You do this sort of thing all, all the time. Whenever you have to figure out how to change a situation, you probably make an argument to yourself without realizing it. Whenever you have to spell out to another person what course of action you should take, you're making an argument. This is one of those sort of examples. Let's just look at one more. Uh, let's look at number three. In 1976, Washington, D.C. banned an ordinance prohibiting private ownership of firearms. Since then, Washington's murder rate has shot up 121%. Bans on firearms are clearly counterproductive. Argument there or not? Yes. There is an argument there, yeah. Again, how do you tell? Look to see whether there is some sort of structure where some claim is being provided support by other claims. What's the claim that, that they're trying to lead you towards in this one? Conclusion? Yes. Bans on firearms are clearly counterproductive. Yeah. That's, that's the thing that they're leading towards. Why are they bringing up um, the stuff about Washington, D.C. passing an ordinance and the murder rate? That's all for support, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you want to practice with these sort of things. You notice that reading this it doesn't automatically come to everybody. So, you know, try to practice this. One of the good things about critical thinking, too, is you can practice this whether you're using a book or watching TV or engaging in conversation in ordinary life because you're making arguments all the time. So, I'll see all of you on Wednesday.